Hi there everyone, my name's David Beebe and welcome to my demo of the Friedman Amplification Dirty Shirley Overdrive pedal. The Dirty Shirley Overdrive comes on the heels of the hugely successful Brown Eye Overdrive pedal that Friedman released back in 2016. That itself was based on the legendary Brown Eye 100 amplifier and this new pedal is attempting to recreate some of that magic but for the Dirty Shirley head. It's housed in an now familiar chassis and shares a similar design aesthetic to the Brown Eye Overdrive. However, it's got a few different and additional controls that makes it more closely match the front panel of the Dirty Shirley. It's positioned as a lower gain pedal, and it certainly is in comparison to the Brown Eye Overdrive, although as you'll hear, it's certainly not lacking for gain. And it's a drive that's gonna give you those big throaty mids for a heavy Marshall type sound, um, although different from that of a typical Plexi amp. I've been particularly excited for the release of this pedal because uh, back in January at the NAMM show, I tried out the 40 watt Dirty Shirley head cranked through a selection of different 4x12s um, in the Friedman Isolation booth and that was pure tonal bliss. It was um, a truly amazing experience that uh, I haven't shut up about since and has given me a serious case of gas. So I have this naive hope that um, maybe this, this pedal will satiate all my filthy needs without having to sell a kidney for the real deal. So let's uh, go through the controls and then check out the sounds. So across the top we've got bass, treble and presence controls and the combined treble and presence is something that's becoming more and more common on pedals designed to run into very clean tube amps. And I think it's a great thing because no matter how dark or bright your head and cab, um, you can really tailor and shape the sound of the pedal to play well with your rig, your, your particular setup. On the bottom we've got uh, volume, mid and gain controls. There's a lot of level in this pedal, you don't need to put it um, the level of the volume too high to get unit to gain, depending on pickups of course. Uh, and But if you really want to slam the front end of your amp, it's more than capable of doing so. The mid control, now this was uh, the control that was missing on the brown eye overdrive. And I think the general consensus is that the, the brown eye overdrive was slightly poorer for it. Um, being such a mid focused heavy pedal, I think it's a wise decision to include it here. And it definitely helps sculpt that uh, important frequency. The gain control, we've talked about already, this is a lower gain pedal, yet if you crank that all the way up, it's gonna roar and sing for days. Internally, another feature it does share with the Brown Eye Pet Overdrive, it has a trim pot where you can either decrease or increase the gain. It's set at default to 10 o'clock, and that's where it's gonna stay for all this demo sounds um, in this video. And then finally, um, this is another difference from the Brown Eye pedal, we have this tight switch, this mini toggle tight switch on the side here. Um, this in the manual is referring to it um, shifting the, the bass response. Um, to my ears, it also affects the mids. And there's also a perceived gain change as well. I feel in the up position, it seems like there's slightly more gain. Uh, in the down position, um, slightly less gain. Okay, so those are the controls and let's now hear the pedal. All right then, so I'm gonna take you through some of the sounds and settings that I used for the various guitar parts on the opening track. I'll be using my Sir Classic Pro, just uh, off the shelf out the box model with uh, HSS setup. Uh, that's gonna go into my regular pedal board, which I'll cut in now. Um, then straight into the front of my uh, Victory V30 head, which feeds the two notes torpedo live with a own hammer impulse response. And then that goes directly into Logic Pro. Um, and the clean sound, I do have a little bit of, uh, of the big sky on, a little bit of reverb for some ambience. The clean sound sounds like this. Okay, so the idea for this track, well, it's been kicking around my head for the best part of a decade, the various riffs and pieces. Um, and I really wanted to get a tone for it that was gonna be heavy, but also have a lot of clarity and quite jangly and spanky in places. So I'm switching between the bridge pickup and the neck pickup quite a lot, even halfway through riffs at times. And so what I did was I've essentially double, a double tracked and sometimes triple tracked the main riff with the different guitar. So we also use the Fibonacci custom. So it, I did it, uh, I think it's on the left track, on the left channel, the tight switch is in the up position and the settings are like so. And you hear the riff, if I play it. <laughs> so 
So a very big, thick, mid-heavy, crunching, uh, roaring sound. And the gain isn't that high. So I know we talked about it being a lower gain pedal, but it's got plenty of it. Um, so I did that uh, track with, on the Fibonari as well. And then I put, did the same thing in the low position, but just reduced the mids slightly because the mids do kick here a little bit more. Um, and then it's very similar tone, but you should hear this shift in the bass response and some of the, the gain, slight gain reduction too. I'll just flip back again. So I'm not sure how clear that will come across on the video, but certainly um, on the track into my ears, uh, there's a real noticeable difference there in, with that tight switch, and uh, not just in the the bass response, but also with the mids and, and the um, and the and the sort of gain power as well. Um, so then the next thing that I did was basically kept very similar settings, but just took the gain all the way down, and what I was going for. Uh, left the mids where they were and then just bring the high up and the presence down slightly and Then what I was going for here was like a, a pushed clean that just about goes into breakup territory uh, And then I played pretty much the same riff again um, But in various parts through the song just change it to add some harmonies and different lines and things so um, So that, you know it sounds like this <laughs> Especially in the chorus type parts, what I would do is to get that real contrasting dynamic, is switch between this bridge pickup and the neck pickup. Um, So you can hear a real big difference there, and it's almost perfectly clean now when I pick lightly. Let's go and talk about the sort of clean sound. So um, in the verse, I take the gain all the way down, leave, again, the settings very much as they are, but just go into the middle pickup um, and then pick very softly. So it's a really quite interesting sort of clean tone and I think that translates very well in the track as well and uh, yeah, it's a nice nice contrast. Um, so then we've got this middle section with a sort of heavier riff and I really go to town here with the tracking. Um, so both on the, using the Fibonari um, and this bridge pickup and then just let, let rip. So the, the gain's up again. I do take this quite a bit higher. Um, can't remember exactly, but the settings were from the, uh, the B-cam anyway, um, that I'll be able to cut in. And then that riff. Um... Just before the solo area. Um, and I think even, yeah, the, you, and if I take the gain up even higher here. starts to grind a little bit and we're still only at sort of like one, two o'clock area. Um, so yeah, it's really great sort of mid heavy grinding sounding pedal. So into the solo. So what I was doing here is having the mids a little bit higher again, everything else just sort of staying the same, having the gain up uh, around the two o'clock mark, just kick on some delay and the compressor, I'm using the Wampler Ego. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think those are all the tones, individual tones I was using uh, on the opening track. So <clears throat> really, it's like one of those things like with your, when you've got a great amp and you get the settings and the tones right for a particular usage, you don't want to necessarily change it all that much. Um, and that's what I, I did. I left the, the sort of presence and treble and bass where it felt like they were dialed in nicely for this track. 
and then really wanted to fo focus on messing with the tight switch spe specifically the mid control because it is a very sort of as I say a mid focus pedal and then just sort of the amount of different usable gain sounds levels we can get out of it um, so I think what I'll do now is just to show you the full extent of it I'll stick on the loop pedal play the main riff and just sweep through the, uh, the various dials so you can hear the range okay <laughs> So wrapping things up then, I really do enjoy what this box does and I think it sort of suits what I do kind of well. It's, it's no big secret that I'm a fan of um, thick throaty mids, uh, some might even say fluty mids, uh, and I think it, it's just a great thing for that. Um, it's, a, it's a heavy hard rock martial tone, but it's not a typical plexi, so if that's what you're looking for, I mean it's, it's a, great, a great, great little device. But the big question, <laughs> obviously the most important question, is does it cure my desire for a £3,000 head version of this? Uh, and of course the answer is no. Um, there's a world of difference between uh, a cranked, the feel of a cranked tube amp and um, the, the feel of even a great sounding pedal like this. Um, and I think that that was always going to be the case. Uh, interestingly, um, my next video, I'm actually going to shoot a comparison demo um, in a different format, but a comparison video of this against the real Dirty Shirley 40 watt head. A friend of mine that lives locally has just annoyingly bought one <laughs> and uh, just to torture me, I think. And yeah, so I think we're gonna get together and do a little shootout between these and see how close we can get them in various different settings. So if you're interested in, in that, keep a look at. Um, yeah, in the meantime, if you want to uh, click like, uh, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And um, if you're interested in lessons with me, you can check me out at my website, davidbb.com. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.